What is up YouTube? It's Kingfisher745. And yes, there's a brand new general release character in the game. This character is a member of the Runaways by the name of Molly Hayes. She's going to be a bruiser for 90 CP. And in this video, we're going to go over her passives as well as her normal abilities. Then I'm going to recruit her and use her in combat. So first of all, she has two passives, Lil Bruiser. All bruisers start with one stack of enraged for having to work with Molly Hayes. And secondly, she has determined, immune to stun, incapacitation, and fear effects. So right away you can see she works well with other bruisers, and you may even want to pull out your bruiser augmenter. But we'll get more into that in the future. Moving on to her first ability, it's called Dropkick, and it says, I saw this wrestling move on TV. This is an unarmed melee attack, and it causes impaired so attacks do 20% less damage and cannot crit. It also causes wide open and combo setup. Right away I could just picture this little girl drop kicking the enemy. Oh and the fact that it is unarmed does open up a number of possibilities both for A-ISO and potential team ups. Then her second attack is also an unarmed melee and this one has deadly crits, exploits combos, and exploits stun. Oh and she came in like a wrecking ball. At this point, I'm sure she's going to work well with Juggernaut, who's going to get a benefit from her passive, and he's going to strengthen her unarmed attacks. Also, for a second ability and no ISO 8, this looks like it's going to do quite a bit of damage. So I am liking the base damage, as well as deadly crits, and exploiting combos and stun. Then her level 6 Raspberry is a self buff, and it gives her Hothead. Raspberry action becomes Temper Tantrum at the beginning of the next turn. It also grants her Taunt the Meanies. Protects allies from single target attacks, and she'll counter enemy attacks with dropkick. So yeah, if you could give her rally, then this would be a quick action, but that's something to think about in the future. Next for her level 9 attack, it's called Let's Play Catch. It is a catastrophic AoE attack, so it can't be protected against, it ignores most avoidance effects, and it's guaranteed to hit. Then it's going to cause Intimidated on all the enemies, reducing their attack, accuracy, and evasion as well as incapacitation which causes them to have a chance to lose a turn and it counts as a stun for actions that affect those targets. So going back to her level 2 wind up punch, this has exploit stun which means it's going to exploit incapacitation. That also reminds me of She-Hulk so you may want to use her with a bruiser skirn. Then moving to her second page, this allows us to see what temper tantrum does. It's a quick action buff, it has cooled off so temper tantrum action becomes raspberry at the beginning of the next round also falls asleep next round, and gains exhaustion next round. But what it's going to do is restore all stamina when it's applied, and Molly Hayes gains infinite actions until recharge. She's also immune to exhaustion and fear. So basically you get to attack until she runs out of stamina. I don't know about you, but I think that sounds amazing. And I may even want to put some stamina ISO 8 on her. But one question I do have is in PvE, if you use items that restore your full stamina, is she going to keep attacking? I mean, that would be one of her infinite actions and she technically hasn't used recharge. So that's one thing that I am curious about. Then moving on to her bio, Molly Hayes is the youngest member of the Runaways. When Molly's abilities of super strength and endurance began to manifest, she saw it as the perfect opportunity to wear a cool costume and become a vigilante hero with her friends but it doesn't look like she got a cool costume at all. Then looking at her team ups, there's a few connections, but I'd have to say the main one is going to be Nico. Well, I suppose there's only three there, but it does make sense to use them together. In the future, I'll definitely do a Runaways team, but for now, I'm going to pair her up with Juggernaut and see just how hard she hits even at a low level. I'm thinking it may be pretty impressive, especially her level two. Okay, you gotta love that recruitment animation. And now onto her dialogue. After that, we'll do a few PvE battles, and yes, I will also cover Hybrid's release. But that will be in a different video. The Helicarrier is heli cool. Can it go into space? I bet you run into all sorts of aliens in space. My friend Carolina says that you'd be surprised at how many aliens visit the Earth these days. I heard that Thor was an alien, but if he's an alien, where is his spaceship? All Thor has is his hammer and a really cute hat with feathers on it. Maybe that's how he got to Earth, by flying with his cool hat. Are we gonna meet Thor? Okay, and I unfortunately already started Fixer on his level 10 training, and I think it costs us 100,000 silver. But reluctantly, I'm going to cancel it. That way I can start leveling Molly Hayes. It's just another sacrifice that I'll do for you. What's sad is I tried to leave that spot open, 
and I really thought there's no way anything's coming out today. And right after I posted that and started training, here came the releases. But hey, I'm happy that they're here. You can also see the Christmas lights are up on the helicarrier, and with that came a special gift. As I mentioned earlier, Hybrid is going to be in the game, but just like last year with Doom, we can't open his lockboxes until Christmas. At least until then, but most likely beyond, there's going to be daily missions, and that's how we'll get lockboxes. But like I said, I want to make a video dedicated to Hybrid, so I'll cover that early tomorrow as well as the first task. Don't worry because right now you can't collect the snowballs for the first task until tomorrow anyway. Back to Molly Hayes, we did get to see her dropkick, but we will also take a look at her level 2. Then as you're watching this, I am leveling her up. In fact, she's going to be training to level 5 very soon. So continue watching and we will have her level 2 for the next battle. And then make sure to subscribe because we will have her at a very high level soon. If you're still wondering whether or not to unlock her, then the next video will be pretty helpful. As for our first look, I think she's a cool character, and she really seems like she's a lot of fun to use. She's going to have some nice team-ups, and I can't wait to see her temper tantrum in action. In fact, I may try to rush to make a video once she's at level 6. So quite possibly I could rush to make a video and at least showcase that ability. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in, and make sure to leave a thumbs up. As for our first fight with Molly Hayes, we only have a few more enemies to defeat, so we should get a couple more drop kicks in or at least one more. Then in the second battle, we will see our level 2 wind up punch, and we can at least get a gauge of what type of damage it can do. Right now on my agent's turn, let's go ahead and take out that top shadow with a Warbringer Axe. After that, we'll do our final attack with Molly Hayes, and then Juggernaut will finish it off. I saw this wrestling move on TV, and that's a vicious dropkick. Okay, so now with Juggernaut, we'll use Surge of Sidorak, and then a Mountain Crusher. So this is it, and then we'll quickly move on to our second battle. But first, just take a look at the XP that you can gain from Chapter 7, Mission 6. Molly's going to get 210 experience. So I would like to say thank you to the person who said this is a great mission for leveling, and it does at least deserve an honorable mention as one of the top leveling spots. However, since it is a premium mission, you do need Wonder Man, so that will serve as a barrier to some. The main reason I was running this mission is to get Black Knight's E-ISO and Eye on the Prize. But skipping ahead to once we had Molly Hayes at level 2, I actually really like that pre-fight animation as well. But still, we are going to take out the enemies with some counters, and then in the next wave, don't worry, we're going to see her wind up punch. There goes a Blade the Guardian counter, and then a Mercurial. Oh, and by the way, since the Cosmic Cardinal is on sale once again, I already made a video on it so you can go and check it out. I'll actually put a link on the screen right now so you can click it, and it should open in a new window. After Juggernaut's pretty massive hit on the Protector, as soon as the Dragon takes his turn and is countered, we are finally going to get to see Molly's level 2. So here goes her unarmed melee attack with a Surge of Sidorak, but she is only at level 2 and has no ISO 8. But it hits for over 13,000 damage. Now I knew that ability was going to be a pretty nice hit. But just imagine with combo setup and stun or incapacitation. Using her with Skurn is definitely going to be nice. Or imagine even someone like Sandman who's a heavy hitter as well. And she's going to give him enrage starting out. Alright, so this time we're going to go ahead and use her level 2 once again. But truthfully, we should have tried to set it up by using her level 1 first. And then her wind up punch. Instead, we missed the first attack. And the second attack, unfortunately, isn't a crit. So yeah, the deadly crits part really makes a big difference. Now I'm just going to go ahead and knock out the remaining enemy, and then we're going to wrap up the video. So I really hope you enjoyed our first look at Molly Hayes, and I think she's going to be a lot of fun to use, and hopefully a powerhouse. Mine will be a level 6 fairly soon, and I'll make sure to test out Temper Tantrum and PvE. So that's going to be it, and I would like to thank you all for watching, and ask you to please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck, and take care.